الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله the question was asked about seeking knowledge from أهل العلم should we and how should we seek knowledge from أهل العلم from أهل السنة والجماعة from the علماء of أهل السنة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم فَاسْأُلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and then this is a command then ask the people of knowledge if you do not know Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala said about this verse he said about uh, regarding this ayah and the commandment to seek out knowledge from Ahl al-Ilm he said هذه آية عمة في كل مسألة من مسائل الدين أصوله وفروعه إذا لم يكن عند الإنسان علم منها أن يسأل أن يسأل من يعلمها ففيه أمر بتعلم وسؤال لأهل العلم ولم يؤمر بسؤالهم إلا لأنه يجب عليهم التعليم وإجابة أما علموه إمام سعدي said رحمه الله تعالى he said this verse and this is referring to the verse فسأل أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون ask the people of knowledge if you do not uh, know or ask those who know if you do not uh, know he said this uh, these verses are in reference, in have a general reference with regarding to every issue with re, uh, regarding all the issues of the religion. Osuluhu wa furu'uhu meaning the foundation, the issues in foundation this could be creed and aqidah wa furu'uhu and the issues of mu'amalat uh, those issues or subsidiary issues if a person does not possess knowledge so then they must ask those who have this knowledge and he said and in this ayat it is a command to learn and ask the people of knowledge ahl al-ilm, ahl al-dhikr the ulama, the scholars and a person is not commanded to just ask them except that this is because it is an obligation upon them to learn and to respond regarding those issues which they learned meaning which those things which they learned as far as seeking knowledge <coughs> Imam bin Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala who was a sheikh who was a a student of Imam Sa'di he said la shakka na talab al-ilm min afdal a'mal he said no doubt that seeking knowledge is, is from the best deeds that you can do bel huwa min jihad fi sabilillah he said rather it is from jihad fi sabilillah وَلَا سِيمَ فِي وَقْتِنَا هَذَا هِينَ بَدَأَتْ الْبِدْعَ تُظَهْرُ فِي الْمُجْتَمِعِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَتَنْتَشِرْ وَتَكْثِرْ وَبَدَأَ الْجَهْلِ الْكَثِيرِ مِمَّا يَتَّلَعَ إِلَى الْإِفْتَابِ غَيْرَ عِلْمِ وَبَدَأَ الْجَدَلِ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ So he said, and especially in this present in these contemporary times because in these times bid'ah innovation religious innovation has uh, become widespread and open in Muslim societies and it is spread and is increased 
and ignorance has also uh, begun to spread. And from it is that there are those who give fatwa, who give religious rulings without knowledge. And many of the people begin to argue about issues uh, which they have no knowledge about. And so, Ahabatin Fillah, we see this being the case that wherever we go, so what about us in the West? <coughs> how much more are we in need of knowledge? And how much more are we in need of being close to the people of knowledge? So my advice regarding this, regarding studying from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, is that you should do so as much as you can and in any way you can. There are ways by the internet now that you can study from students of knowledge and probably link in in different masajid to telelinks to the ulama of Ahl Sunnah in various locations in Yemen and Saudi Arabia and wherever they may be, yeah, all over the world. And there are, or my advice is the best way, the absolute best way, is that if you have the means and the <clears throat> intention to seek knowledge, to go forth, leaving your homes, going to Islamic lands to study, then I would advise that. That is the best way to sit with ulama. And that will require, in most cases, that you learn the Arabic language so that you'll be able to communicate and you'll be able to understand what the ulama have to offer. The ulama of Ahl Sunnah, especially the major scholars from Ahl Sunnah. <clears throat> My advice also is that you do not prohibit yourself from khayr, as many of the ulama have, have mentioned, by those opportunities that you have. For example, in America, in the UK, we have many ulama, especially in the UK, they have many off, uh, opportunities, many uh, scholars that come for dorat, they come for, uh, for teaching and lessons and lectures, that you should not miss that. Many, I, I'm always seeing on the internet of these opportunities. <clears throat> so do whatever it takes to sit and go to those lectures and finish books when they're finishing books or whatever benefit you can and try to get one of your questions, some of your questions to the ulama because they have come to you from Saudi Arabia and from Yemen and from other places. So my advice is do not prohibit yourself by saying, oh, this there's one scholar there I don't like or I heard he's a hizbi, I'm gonna run. And so then you sit jahil and you don't benefit from those ulama from Ahl Sunnah that are coming to, they have come to you, come to your doorstep. It might not even be a matter of a fee to get in. It may be a matter of you taking a taxi. So don't prohibit yourself from this khayr. <clears throat> so this is just some general advice is that you should go forth and strive and that's the best if you can make the sacrifice to go seek knowledge if you're unable to do so when they come to your societies, take, make every uh, effort to gain <coughs> and sit with the ulama. And if you're not able to do that, then at least listen and sit with uh, local students of knowledge that are doing lectures in the masajid and that are doing books especially. Because this is what's going to raise your knowledge. It's not just from lectures. Lectures are, are beneficial, but lectures are not the assass of ilm. You don't gain the assass of your knowledge, most of your knowledge, from muhabarat, from, from just lectures. But rather, you need to go to go through matun, go through text, <clears throat> as the ulama of the past and present uh, have done and do. So these are just general advices, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah and Wajal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.